All right, so today I want to cover eight ball python morphs that, in my opinion, probably won't depreciate that much. And if they do depreciate, they'll probably depreciate pretty slowly. And one of the things you really want to avoid when you're investing in ball pythons, you really want to avoid morphs that have the potential of depreciating really quickly. There's been a couple that kind of stand out, the, the Coral Glow slash Banana. I know when it first came out, they were selling for like $25,000 a piece, and the prices came down really sharply. I think one of the reasons is is because it's a co-dominant morph and you can take a coral glow and breed it through your whole collection and produce a whole bunch of them and what that does is it increases the supply which really drives the price down in a lot of cases. And the other one probably in more recent history was the scaleless head ball python. When the scaleless head first came out when I first started they were about $45,000 for a scaleless head and they were selling really quickly. As a matter of fact, now you could probably pick up a scaleless head for just a few hundred bucks. It's pretty amazing how fast it's come down. But there are a few morphs that have held their price ever since I started in ball pythons, and those are the ones that I want to cover today. All right, so I'm going to jump over here at morphmarket.com, and the first snake that I want to start with is the pied ball python. The pied is a recessive mutation. You need two copies of the gene for a visual, and this is what it looks like. Essentially, when you have a pied, you have these large patches of white through the snake. Sometimes you can have a lot of white, and sometimes you can have a low white pied. And the funny thing is, is the pied was the, the first ball python on the scene in the whole ball python industry. Pretty much the gene that kick-started the whole industry. Industry. and everyone loves the pies I'd say it's kind of interesting because when they first started out the the prices were really high it was about I think it was about twenty five thousand dollars a snake as a matter of fact when I bought my first pied the guy that I bought him from he said he was paying two thousand dollars for het pies back in the day and they've come all the way down and when I first started out I was actually buying pies I think it was about three hundred fifty to four hundred dollars for a pie. I think I paid like seven or eight hundred dollars for a pair and here it is like five years later and they're still pretty much the same price as they were way back then. As a matter of fact if you take a look at this one I just kind of randomly pulled this one up. This one is for sale for three hundred and fifty dollars plus another about fifty dollars shipping so it's still four hundred dollars for a pie even after all these years. So I'm thinking you know, it's, it's kind of interesting because you get to the point where the price Prices pretty much meet the supply and the demand and it kind of balances out and there's such a huge demand for pied ball pythons that the price is pretty much stabilized at about 300 versus if you have a lot of these other morphs like lessers or pastels or some of the other more common morphs I'd say they, a lot of them are pretty much you know anywhere from like $80 to maybe about 150 for just base mutations but the pied is really held in there I think because it's such an amazing snake when you see it even if you're a beginner you don't know anything about ball pythons and you see a pied you're like yeah that is the snake that I want it's pretty awesome so the other th interesting thing about pieds is what I found it's it's kind of interesting that the males seem to be a lot cheaper than the females so this is a female about $350 you can actually pick up males for quite a bit less than the females and it seems like that is pretty much the case when it bottoms out because most people that are interested in breeding you need more females than you actually need less males because one male can service multiple females so it's kind of interesting how the whole supply and the demand and the pricing works and I would say if you invest in pies I can almost guarantee that in five or six years pies will probably still be about the same price that they are today Another one that's held on pretty much from the beginning is, as far as I started about five years ago, that is the clown ball python. And the interesting thing is when I first started in ball pythons, I was looking at the pieds and the clowns, and I thought the, cl the pieds were a lot more impressive than the clowns just as a standalone morph. But when you start mixing other genes in with the clown, it seems like the clown's a little bit more impressive. The clown is also recessive, and that's the other thing you have to keep in mind when people start adding other genes into clown they have to breed it and then they produce hets and then breed the hets back together 
to produce visuals. So when you're talking about recessives or anything with where you need two copies of the gene, it always takes a lot longer to produce new combinations. And that's why it really holds its price over the long term as well. And it's a little more long term of a project versus if you took like a co-dominant, like a banana, and you bred it through your whole collection. The first year you could produce awesome banana combos versus if you took a clown and did the same thing the first year you would get all heads and then it would take you like three years to grow up all your females to the point where they're ready to breed and then you have to breed back to get the visuals so there's always that multiple year lag for all of your projects in a recessive and it kind of holds the price a lot better so if we take a look at this one this was actually a clown I just randomly pulled it up this was $450 for a female clown and it's kind of the same thing with the clowns the females are commanding a higher price than the males but the prices have pretty much stayed almost the same for pretty much the last five years since I got into ball pythons so here's another one that's kind of an anomaly. I'd say it's not really in the same kind of a class as the Pides and the Clowns. That is the Tri-Stripe. And the, the interesting thing about the Tri-Stripe is it's not as popular as the Clowns and the Pides. There's not a whole lot of people working on the Tri-Stripe. And, and just because there's not that many people, the demand is a little bit smaller and the supply is a little bit smaller, which really kind of increases the price and the price holds on a little bit stronger I would say than like the pides and the clowns so this one's it's kind of interesting I pulled this one up and just for a visual tri stripe this one actually sold for $950 back in 2016 I was actually looking on morph market believe it or not there's not a lot of people working on tri stripe anymore which is kind of surprising it, it, uh, I almost got into the project myself and the, th the kind of the challenge with the tri stripe is a lot of the times when you have a, a, like a pattern mutation where you're looking at stripes on uh, the snake, you really don't want to mix it with like a pied or a leopard or GHR, anything that really breaks up the stripes because then you kind of lose the impact of the tri stripe. And I think the best combination that I've seen with the tri stripe is the albino tri stripe, which is pretty awesome. This is also a recessive, so all your recessives tend to hold their value long term because it's a lot more difficult to work more genes into a recessive. Here's another one that I, I'm actually working on this project myself. This is a Desert Ghost. I kind of threw the pastel Desert Ghost in there because I think it's more impressive with the pastel. And there's it's, it's kind of an interesting anomaly. I'd say there's a higher demand on the Desert Ghost and a limited supply. And I think that's what really drives the price up. And it's also a recessive mutation. It's, it's like one of those hidden gems that people are just starting to discover the Desert Ghost. And if you look at the price on this one this is $750 and for a female pastel desert ghost and it's almost the same price for, I think it is exactly the same price as I paid for my male pastel desert ghost about five years ago so the prices are almost unchanged on the desert ghost as well Here's another one that has it's pretty much been the same price ever since I started in ball pythons, and that is the highway and the freeway combos. And I just kind of threw this in there. I think the most impressive is the pastel freeway with the pastel, the yellow belly, and the asphalt. And it's I would say it's not a recessive, but it's an allelic combination. So it's almost as difficult to hit as the a recessive. Uh, it almost has it almost has a negative kind of a spin on it because if you actually produce asphalts or yellow belly they almost look like normal ball pythons it's almost like heads i'd say it's close as you can get to a recessive without actually working on a recessive and this one actually sold for one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars almost pretty much the exact same price as when i got into the projects about five years ago and i would say this is a pretty safe bet working with this and one of the things that really didn't get me into the project 
project is the fact that you, you a lot of times you'll end up if you breathe this with something else you'll get yellow bellies and asphalts which is it's really hard to tell the difference between the two and it's hard to tell the difference between those and a normal looking ball python so it's a little bit trickier to work with this but when you do hit some combos it is extremely impressive probably one of the most impressive combos in ball pythons that I've ever seen hands down this is one of my favorite combos Here's another one, this is the puzzle. The puzzle is, has been holding really strong for the last five years as well. It's a recessive mutation and I actually did a morph special on the puzzle and it has some really awesome potential. You can work some genes in the puzzle and make some really amazing combos. And it's, it's kind of interesting because if you look at it as a standalone morph, I even think the standalone morph is really impressive. The thing that really keeps people away from puzzles I think is the high entry price. So so for example, this one sold for $2,200. I mean, if you want to get to the project, you're spending like four or $5,000 for a pair of puzzles. And then of course, if you wanna work more genes into it, you produce the hets and then have to breathe the hets back together. And it's a pretty much a long-term project. But it's one of the projects that has really been holding strong as far as the prices. Here's another one. I'm going to throw two more in there that are like high-end projects. This is the Sunset. And the Sunset was really expensive when I first got into ball pythons. And it is still almost out of reach as far as pricing. I mean, if you get into Sunset, this one, actually this one just says Inquire. I was actually looking at some prices on some of these Sunsets. And I'd say they start about $5,000 a snake. And I think that's one of the things that really keep a lot of people out of really jumping in and kind of mass producing a lot of these is they're so expensive you can only afford usually just one or two at a time I mean it would cost you like ten thousand dollars for a pair of sunsets just to get into the project and then of course you're waiting about three years for your females to mature and it's a recessive so it's really hard to work other genes into the sunset and I would say it's it's one of those genes that I think because it's not really that popular not a lot of people are really working on sunset i think it's going to hold the pri its price over the long term probably will drop significantly but i think it's going to take a long time before the sunset is probably within my price range if you're looking for kind of a high-end project that really can hold its price long term i would consider the sunset so here's another one. This is the monsoon. I'd say this is probably on par with the sunset. It is actually pretty new on the market. It hasn't been around that long. This is it's actually this one actually sold for fifteen thousand dollars. So this is even a step above the sunset. This is like I mean you could buy three sunsets instead of a monsoon. So the prices are really high. It's a recessive morph, pretty much brand new on the market. I think this one's really going to hold its price long term. It's it's another one of those really high-end morphs that's kind of a specialty morph probably for people that are really into breeding ball pythons where you can free up a lot of money from your other sales of your snakes and invest it into something really high-end like the monsoon all right so it is time for the question of the day and david welch asks how do you learn to identify ball python morphs? And that is a very good question. I'd say it's a little bit easier if you actually know what morph you actually have. For example, if you had a bamboo, especially in combos, you know, for, you can actually look at this as a base morph and you know, yes, this snake around my neck, this is a bamboo ball python. Why don't you start mixing different genes together? Unless you specifically know the breeding and the possibilities of the outcome, I'd say it's really hard to identify combos combos, especially really subtle morphs. And that is really, I'd say that's probably the biggest challenge. A lot of people buy ball pythons, they don't really know what's in the snake. And a lot of people will post their ball python, their pictures or a short video, and they'll ask me, hey, what is this ball python? And a lot of times it is a guess. And essentially what you'd have to do is you'd have to kind of breed it into other combinations 
to figure it out and sometimes it's kind of obvious sometimes it is pretty difficult especially if you have a multi-gene animal and pretty much the two best places to look for ball pythons and the combos and kind of study up that would be over on morph market you know i hang out a lot a lot on morph market and look at the genes and all the combinations you can also go over to the world of ball pythons they have where you can actually look at all the different morphs and the combos and you can also look over here on youtube i actually do do quite a few morph specials where I'll kind of really focus on one morph and the combos when that morph is mixed in with other genes and show you the potential of the morphs. So I'd say that's probably the best place that you can study and learn ball pythons. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.